Easily the most common question I get asked on my channel is always around how I record guitar. There's so many different variables when considering recording guitar from hardware, pedals, what guitar to use, what pickups to use. It can be a real challenge, especially when you're new to the recording world, to understand how to best record the guitar. So hopefully in this video I can demystify it for you. I'm just going to go over exactly how I record guitar personally, so if you like my sound, then you can see exactly what I do. And then I'm also going to break down a couple of alternative methods of recording guitar that are probably a little bit more accessible if you're on a budget. I'll talk about how to reduce buzz and other noises associated with recording guitar, as well as what I use in Ableton to get my sound, what effects I use, my processes, and hopefully it can be insightful to you. So it's probably worth talking about what guitar you're going to be using first. So for this video I'm going to be using the Fano guitar, it's got some P90s on here, I've got uh, regular slinky 10s on the guitar strings, and usually when I'm recording guitar, I'm doing all my gain staging with the volume on max on the guitar. If I want to drop the volume down later, put some quieter bits, that's fine. But everything is going to be gain staged with volume on max. I just find that's the best way for tone and for getting the cleanest sound. Talking about clean sounds as well, pickups plays a big part in that. If you've got a humbucker, that's generally the quietest pickup you can get. Single coil and P90 on the other hand will pick up a little bit more noise with electronics and things like that but they're still very much usable. Often if I'm recording with a P90 or a single coil, I'll just need to get away from my musical equipment a bit, maybe face uh, in the opposite direction, which is why you'll often see me recording like this. Uh, it just faces it away from the electrical interference noise and it's just a nice little sound to work with. So that's the guitar side of things and I'll go into more detail about gain staging in a minute. So once you're happy with your guitar setup, there are two main ways that you can record your guitar. The first is using a mic so go through an amp, a cab, or a combo unit and micing it up, recording into your DAW and then processing the sound from there. The second is going DI, be it with some hardware in between, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but generally DI is going straight into your computer and then applying things like amp and cab simulators, uh, adding reverb, etc., and processing it that way. And to be honest, unless you've got a kitted out recording studio, the best thing for most people is going to be going DI in some different form. A lot of recording purists might say that you need to mic up to get the real warmth, uh, but that's really not the case. You've got people like John Mayer playing live gigs DI with hardware and software. Most of the people that you see online on TikTok and YouTube will be recording DI, I can guarantee you. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. There's a few different softwares that you can use for the amp and cab simulation. In this video, I'm going to go over three of the most popular ones, so Amplitube, Biased FX and Archetype Corey Wong, uh, which are three that I see pretty much everyone use. There is also a Native Instruments guitar rig, which I don't think personally is as good in my experience as the other three that I've talked about, but that's also out there. Um, and honestly, you can get a nice sound of all of them, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but for me personally, I also have an extra step, which is going into my Laney L5 studio. This is an amp that lets me run my guitar in and then send a DI signal out into the interface, so it's still DI, I'm not actually micing anything up. So I'm just gonna demo exactly how I personally record guitar, and then I'll go over some of the alternatives using the software I mentioned before. So as I said earlier, I'm using the Laney L5 Studio, which is just an added step, but I just wanted to cover exactly how I'm recording guitar for those of you who are interested. So my audio is going from my guitar into my amp, just adding a little bit of tube saturation, a little bit of warmth, and then into my DAW through my interface. And before you apply any effects, the first and arguably most important thing to do is to gain stage your guitar properly. And this simply means you're looking to set the audio level of your guitar to the right spot just before you start applying effects. This spot comes from analog gear. With analog gear, there used to be a sort of sweet spot, which is where you wanted your levels to be before you went into the equipment. This is around minus 18 decibels. So if you get a VU meter, I'm currently using the Max for Live VU meter here but you can get any sort of VU meter software, VST, it might even be a standard feature of your DAW. You want to set the nominal level to minus 18 if it isn't already, often it will be. And then you want to start playing your guitar and seeing if you're hitting around zero on the VU meter. If you go too much over, you might be getting too much distortion. And if you're too much under, you might not be getting the compression or the saturation that you want from your plugins. Now, depending on the pickups that you use and how loud you play your guitar, it's going to change exactly how loud your guitar input is going to be. And for me, because I'm using an amp in between, it's gonna be a different level as well than if I was going DI. So I always check this when I'm going straight into my computer. So if I crank my volume up, stop playing. This is what the signal sounds like from my amp without any effects. 
and I can see that I'm hitting around at the zero dB on V meter. So that's perfect. You'll also notice that my signal at this point is quite clean. So I've got my guitar volume set on max and I've tweaked my amp settings and I've got the gain staging correct. And I'm also trying to avoid facing my guitar at any electronics and being too close to that. So I'm not getting interference from that part side of things. Make sure, like for example, your phone's not in your pocket because that can often be something that you overlook that's feeding straight into the pickups and causing interference. But if you're getting any major interference that you just cannot get rid of at this point, I would recommend maybe looking into getting something like a, a sound reduction plugin. So if I purposefully try and make lots of noise, you can hear the buzz in here. I'll crank that up so it's more present. I can drop a plugin like Brust Free, which is from Clayground Audio. And if I press learn with just the distortion, it'll learn what it sounds like and then it'll get rid of it. This is more of a last resort method because it will take away some of the character of the guitar tone. But if you really are struggling, that's one thing you can do before you go into your effects. But I'm going to take that off because I don't need it. So next up on my effects chain is a tuner. Always good to have that before you start going into effects. If you apply things like chorus or flanger, it's going to mess with the tune of the guitar. So make sure that your guitar is tuned before you start anything else. Next up, I use Amplitude 4. And this is purely for the cab simulation. I'll go over Amplitude in more detail as I go over the other simulation plugins. But I'm just using this for the cab. Just using a 57 Deluxe cab. And I've got the amp turned off. So it's not doing anything. So. That's what it sounds like with. That's what it sounds like without. It's just giving it a bit of a more sort of muffled uh, vintage character. Next up for me is a saturator, which I'm really pushing. So I've got 22 decibels on the drive and then consequently I'm dropping the output by about 21 decibels. So it's adding around a decibel of volume. But it's also adding a lot of saturation. So I've got DC and color checked. And these are all my settings for those of you who want to copy it in Ableton. Just adding a little bit of saturation, distortion, a little bit of warmth. Next up, I like to throw on a compressor Generally, unless I'm playing really loud, it doesn't do that much. It's a few dB of compression there. I've got 5 dB on the makeup, just compensating for the compression that it does do. I've got the attack set really low, and the release is on auto with a ratio of 4 on 100% dry and wet. Next up, I use the Dark Hall Reverb from Ableton's standard reverb selection with the high cut because I add convolution to the high in a second. So it's not too present, it's at 40% on the dry wet, but there's high cut on there and there's a little bit of a decay time. Always make sure that with Ableton, you've got the quality on high on this. It's not that CPU heavy, so it's there's really no need to have it on low. And these are the settings that I use as my standard preset. And then finally, I usually drop a convolution reverb on there as well. The St. Albert's Cathedral preset on 20% dry and wet, just giving it that high end shimmer. And that's it for my main guitar rack. I do often tweak this. I'm always working on new guitar sounds. So generally it'll various time goes on, but this is what I'm using at the moment. But next what I'm gonna do is show you how you can get a similar tone, go and DI in the guitar without the need for the amp. So lastly, I just wanna talk about three of my personal favorite softwares when recording guitar DI. These sound great without using any additional hardware or software. Purely using these, they've got everything you need to get a great tone. So I'll just go through demoing them, what they look like and how to use them. So as always, make sure that you've got your gain staging set about right before going in. So this is just my DI tone without anything else applied. Next up, I'm going to go into the Archetype Cory Wong VST plugin. So this is what it looks like. I've got a pretty much out of the box setting. I've made a few minor tweaks to the bass preset. With all of these, they've got loads of different presets to mess about with. Some of them are more extreme sounds and some of them are just nice clean tones but this is just messing about with the basic out of the box sample. So you've got this nice interface here with an amp that you can adjust all your typical amp settings. Um, and I'll just show you what it sounds like. So it sounds really nice. I've got some reverb on there and some of the tube amp simulations. So I'm running through this basic amp here uh, I've also got these pedals in the chain, but none of them are turned on other than the compressor, which I can turn off here as well if I want to. 
Next up, I've got an EQ, so I've just boosted the highs a little bit here. And it's going into a two cab system with two different mics there recording. You can adjust the mic position, the mic levels, etc. There's so much you can choose from with this. Uh, and then finally, you've got some reverb and delay plugins on the end here. So, really nice plugin and it looks amazing. And of the three I'm going to talk about, this is the one that probably sounds great. Uh, the easiest, it takes less tweaking to get a nice sound. So, I would highly recommend. You've also got this cool shimmer effect and reverb. Yeah, lots of cool things to mess around with on this one. Uh, it's quite a recent one to my collection. I've used it a few times uh, in recent videos and I mentioned it because it's got great bass presets as well. But yeah, worth checking out. Um, next up, I'm going to the one that I've used the most historically. I've used Amplitude 4 and Amplitude 3 and I believe there is an Amplitude 5 out at the moment. So with Amplitude, they've based a lot of their amp and cab models on actual hardware. So I've got the Fender Twin Reverb 65 edition up here. Really nice sound. Again, you can tweak the amp settings. If you go over to the cab, you can again change the, the mic placement or you can pick different cabs. I've got a little EQ on the rack there and you can also add stomp pedals in the chain or mess about with the chain and have different variations on your own presets. So another fantastic and easy to use plugin. This is the one I've used the most. It's probably a little bit harder to get perfect sounds out of than it is on the Cory Wong. Uh, but I'm just so used to using this now, it's sort of my go-to simulation for amp and cap. So we'll definitely recommend checking this one out. With this one, there's a lot of additional add-ons that you can buy. Uh, if you get the base version, it's probably got all of what you need, but if you can buy uh, different guitar players own custom range pedals and amps and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you don't need to, and this is great out of the box again. And real quick too, the last one is Bias Amps 2. Another pretty commonly used one. Got some really nice gritty tube sounds in this. And as with the other one, you can change the cab mic placement. You can go onto the amp and change the EQ on the amp there, the presence, the master volumes. There's different preamps to tweak. You can drag and drop EQs in there, take them out. Uh, there's just so much, again, to choose. And I've got the hall reverb on here. Reverbs are really nice in bias amps. Uh, and then you've also got like a noise gate and some other settings on the bottom to tweak. Uh, but this one, again, real nice sound and it's a little bit more gritty. Uh, great for sort of neo soul vibes. Great plugin, well worth checking out. Um, but yeah, that was just a quick rundown of my three favourites. Um, I hope this video has overall been useful. Please do let me know in the comments down below if you have any more questions about this or if you want me to go into anything in more detail. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and I hope it was useful. See you next time.